Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I would like to start with our first keynote speech, the meet of an ideal event, and invite the owner and CEO of Max Medium Group of Companies to the stage, Mrs. Tanya Spornova. Hello, everybody. I hope you had a good lunch. So I'm ready to start. So what I want to tell about today, I want to tell about the myth of an ideal event. Is it, uh, how many of you had ideal events in your, in your life? Nobody? So I think I have nothing to speak about. <laughs> so um, I want to say that no projects are ideal because in every single project there are some overlaps, even if we are breaking the deadlines, even by one day, it's basically not, not an ideal project. So uh, let's look at me. That is me maybe in, in my ideal version. That's me in the morning. And that's me somewhere in the middle. So uh, are we ideal? No, no, basically we are different and uh, different uh, even periods of day. So uh, I think we are, should really try to be ideal and we should do the ideal effect. It should be very ideal at the end for the client and for the audience. But it's not the, really the aim because we would, we would never achieve it. It's better to manage the problems, it's better to manage the situation and that is what I, I want to, uh, to say to say here. So we, all have, we always have the problems. So I would split it. Uh, we have the external problems. So any force majeure, so we, we can basically do anything about, but we can manage them when they happen. And we, I think everybody knows what to do if, if something happens and we are really uh, usually good at it. And we have internal problems. So we never speak about internal problems, we never speak out about them, because it's, it's not very good, we might look not as, as we want to. Uh, and we are also silent about the client's problems, because if we, if we would say to the client that you are not good enough, and you are not smart enough, and we would, we would speak out about that, I, I don't think anybody would love it. So we usually keep silence about the problems and the pictures we show out about our events, it it's really look very ideal, but it's not that ideal it, it, in reality. Uh, so at the end we have like a layer cake of misunderstanding and I want you to have less problems with uh, your events and I want to uh, focus today on three things. Uh, the common goals, the responsibility and the trust. Uh, the common goals, the greatest misconception of communication is to think that it has happened. That Bernard Shaw and he was really right about it. What is, how do we see the ideal result? So how the clients see it? Uh, they want us to motivate the people, they want to get their loyalty, they want us to solve their task. How the agency usually see the, their, their ideal result, we book the great hotel, we arrange the transfers, and we book that and so on and so on. Are we thinking the same way? No, we are not thinking by the task of the client, and the client doesn't think by our tasks. So we see a difference. Uh, what is the ideal result for the, for, for the client? Uh, sometimes they can be really very, very strange and unusual. Uh, the real result can be to satisfy the management, to make the general manager like the event. And it can be the real, real task of the event manager of, of the company who orders your event. It can be not to exceed the budget, not to motivate, but to keep, keep to the budget which is allowed for this event. 
it can be to 90% uh, turnout of the participants to the event. It can be the KPI. I know the client whose KPI is to arrange 90% uh, turnout for, for all events. And he really focuses on it, not on the motivation, loyalty, and so on. Um, let's imagine that you are doing a nice event in Milan, and you are taking uh, your client's partners over there. And you need to arrange the program so great so that would, they wouldn't go to shopping instead of going to, to a nice dinner. So it also can be the, the task of, the, uh, of, the, of your client. So what I want to say, uh, if you have the project, you want the tender or you got the contract, uh, find out the truth because the truth can be really surprising and the truth is what you should focus on at, at the end because that would be the result for, for the client and that would be the ideal event. Um, responsibility. Uh, who is responsible for the event? What do you think? Both. Else. Both. Okay. The agency usually thinks that they are the one who is responsible for the event. But let's think, face the fact. Uh, the agency is a gene, and the client is the one who is responsible for the, for the event. Because if, uh, if we do the event not very good, let's Let's assume it. So we just would be, they change the agency. What would happen to the client if, if the event wouldn't go very well? They can be fired. So we are just the hands, the mind, sometimes only the hands, and sometimes only the mind. But the responsibility lies on the client. And not everybody is really sure about that. Uh, so, the genie is not a, a weathercock, but we should be the partners, because at the end we are both responsible for the event. The client is responsible for the event, for the budget, for the, for the result, and we are responsible for the providing those results, and um, also to getting to the true reasons and true aims of the, of the event. That is what I think it's really the first stage. Uh, I tell you my story. Once I did a big conference in uh, Jordan. It was for uh, one of the major brewing companies. And we did a great 3D show for the general manager because he had a very um, a lot of figures in, in his result, the year results, and he wanted to show it really great and nice because there were 450 people and they should understand it and, uh, and see it, not just the figures on the screen. And we did the great 3D show. And just uh, a night before, before the event, in the morning we had the conference start, and at night we, we are doing the rehearsal, and he says, oh, I have, I can see the decaliters, there are millions and millions of decaliters, and I see in the figure that the last three figures are not exact. I said, okay, you can say it in words, because it's not good to change uh, the video itself and the production. And behind me, the technical crew stands and said, oh, no problem, we'll do it. Okay, oh, no, let's, let's don't do it, because uh, it's too late, it was like, 11 o'clock in the evening, and we have at 9 o'clock, we have your presentation. Oh, they said they can do it. Let's do it. They're professional. They, they know what they're saying. So I couldn't resist it because he insisted, and they said yes. Uh, they started to change it, and by the morning, uh, they couldn't do it, uh, and we couldn't rehearse it. So when everybody was in the hall like here now, we started a nice intro, and we started the presentation and everybody was wearing these 3D glasses and the music went on, but the video didn't. Uh, it was terrible 
really what I felt it was it was really terrible the same he was standing on the stage he felt the same and uh, to start it we need to restart all the computers and it took us about 10 minutes everybody was waiting they took off their 3d glasses and we started again it went okay but it wasn't the effect we we wanted from from his presentation so why did I tell you this story because the partner is the one who can say no when you need to say no when you feel it 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 can spoil the event when you feel that it can spoil the effect when you feel it 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 can uh, harm the image or or whatever uh, or you you are not in deadlines you know you you can do it but uh, you wouldn't be sure in in the results uh, the trust the trust is really very important thing uh, we have distrust uh, with the clients we have distrust of the content let's say the client says i want an innovative idea uh, i want something new and you work on it and when you come to and the client comes oh no i would do it as i usually do because i am comfortable uh, so why did you ask for it uh, we worked on it and we tried because uh, we, all of us, we are really scared of any innovation. We think it, it wouldn't be taken, but um, if, you th if you come to the professional as, as a client, uh, and just trust. Trust because it, as, as for myself, I, I consider myself as a professional organizer, and I know how it would work. I know how it would uh, work with the people. I know what can be accepted. I know what can be accepted. I never would offer something that wouldn't go for this audience. I, we study carefully for whom we are doing the events, what they did before, and we are trying to. We are not trying to uh, break their walls but we are trying to give a little bit more than, than was in, in the past. So another distrust of the process. Uh, I know you, you all know this, uh, this example. Let's say we have no budget, but urgency, urgently booked our con. But let's count the budget first. Because you are short of budget and you want to book some very expensive artist and you are doing the event some, somewhere out of your country or out of your city and you need to uh, pay the travel expenses, you need to pay their riders, accommodation, business class, uh, um, nice room and so on. But you want to book it and at the end we are coming that we are just uh, jumping over the stages. And at the end we are coming that, oh, the Tarkon is booked. But we have no money for their flights and uh, some of the um, riders and so on. So, um, distrust uh, greatly reduces the probability of an ideal event because, and it really makes our mission sometimes impossible. Because if you are, if you are step over some some stages of the preparation, you can miss something. Then you catch it up, and it might be too late. You might not have budget for it. You might not have time for it. You might not have people to to really fix it. So, and another thing, the control is very expensive. The control takes your resources. It takes your time. It takes people to, to control something. And sometimes it takes money. And it's very expensive, not only for the agency, it's also expensive for the, for the client. So it's, it's expensive for, for both. And without trust, there is, there is no great result because the trust is the most significant factor uh, affecting also employer satisfaction. If, if you have the team and your team, your client doesn't trust your team, would there be a result? Or you have the client and you don't trust them, would there be any good result? No, it would like you would spend a lot of time really fighting. Um, maybe silently, but but you are still you are not losing your time and you are really losing your time and energy f not for doing the event. Um, if you have the lack of trust, if you have the lack of trust, you can 
speak out really very wisely, you can speak very accurate, but if people don't trust you, they, at the end, they would uh, misunderstood you. Uh, if you have the higher level of trust, you can even make a mistake. You can even, uh, but if you have the trust of your client, you can very fast speak about it. You can show them the real situation that we are here today. And so uh, we have the step one, step two, and step three, and it would be solved. And with the trust, it's really very easy going. The, and you can solve your, like, everybody is one in, in one board. Um, so if you have the common goals, if you have fixed the deadlines, uh, if you have fixed the budget, so just start to trust each other because it's very, very important. So what I wanted to tell you about so there are always pro problems in any single event. Uh, the only thing you have to do it and learn your teams to do it is to be capable to manage them. You have to also focus on the common goal, the responsibility, and the trust. And live long and happy and do your best, almost ideal projects. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>